Hello, how's it going? What's going on guys? Ern here. Oh, it's been a bit. I promised myself I'd be uh, a little bit more consistent with uploading, but you know what? Been too busy. Um, welcome back to the channel today. Doing some cool stuff. Um, I have something that I've been trying to open and I keep forgetting and I wanted to share uh, for a few weeks now. I got a big, gigantic buddy box over there that I'm behind on. Go figure. Um, and just thought I'd open up some stuff and chill and just talk and see see where this goes. So, I purchased this. I've not opened it yet, as you can see. This gigantic jumbo booster pack um, from a seller in Italy. And... Apparently, back during XY, um, during certain sets, they would release these gigantic jumbo packs. And they've done this before with Chilling Rain in Japanese, um, and then a few other, of the other Sword and Shield sets. Oh my gosh. This is part of a... Oh my gosh, so cool. Uh, it was given away as part of like a promotional campaign um, for... Emerald Break, so Emerald Break in Japanese is part of Roaring Skies in English, so as you can tell. I wonder if I could get this graded, probably not, but I don't want to get it graded. So this is a gigantic jumbo pack. I won't spoil what's inside as I try to carefully open it up and get it, get it loose. You're probably asking, why would I have a scale next to me? Um, there's, there's one reason. I actually grade packs. And so one of the things I wanted to do, you can see right here, with this was take out these packs, weigh them. If it's heavy, I'm going to open it. If it's light, I'm going to grade it. And uh, hopefully they're actually in good condition. I had no way of knowing if this was actually gonna be in good condition based on the photos um, and also it's old, so it's not very really, very easy to keep. Um, so this is definitely a gamble. But you know, sometimes in a hobby, as you are trying to find your way and figure out what's interesting to you, like I do all the time, sometimes you just buy things that you are interested in and seem awesome. So I think the right thing to do here would be to get my scissors and rip this bad boy open. So it comes with a Blaziken promo card, which I don't think is worth very much. Two packs of Gaia Volcano, which is Primal Clash. Two packs of Tidal Storm, which is, I also think, Primal Clash. Two packs of Emerald Break, which is Roaring Skies. And so this is how it comes out. Giant wrapper. I mean, I, I gotta imagine back in the day, getting something this big and opening up would have been awesome. Let's see, let's see what we got here. This is a poster. I'm probably just gonna toss this or give this to someone. Uh, it's a cool poster that shows all the cards in ML Break. And as you can see, the top hit is going to be the Rayquaza. Don't at me, it's Rayquaza, not Rayquaza. Deal with it. Um, but yeah, I actually just sold this card. Let me see this. I just sold this in a PSA 10. Literally five minutes ago, actually. I just packed it up. Um, yeah, cool cards. Um, I have some of these raw in the collection. Uh, again, so I'm going to look through these, and uh, whatever looks good, we're going to grade, and we're going to to sell. Um, that's what I do. Um, I found a nice little niche, niche for me when it comes to graded Japanese booster packs. Um, there's a market for them. No surprise. It's not very big. No surprise. And, uh, you know, I think they are, they fit well with what I like to do in the hobby, which is participate in box breaks. I jump into box breaks a lot because um, <laughs> I like to gamble. I have an addicting personality. Um, and so what I do is I buy a handful of, I'm buying two, four packs of a Japanese box break. All the light ones I keep and I grade, sell them off, heavy ones I rip. Uh, which I have not had any luck, really. Um, and uh, see, I don't think these are worth it. 
Yeah. Usually when they come out of a box, this one actually... When they come out of the booster boxes, they are, like, extremely minty. No issues. See, this one, I don't know. I'll have to look at some of the other packs I graded. I don't know if that would qualify. It probably won't. Oh, well. You know, that's this is all fun. And I think you know, part of this video is me just rambling and enjoying myself and oh, look at that i think i'll give that one a shot and uh you know maybe i get lucky here so first start off this video huge shout out to my guy ibex he's got a channel dark ibex you know it's exchanging messages with him and uh you know some words of encouragement from him really kicked me in the butt a bit to keep keep on the content train and just you know be consistent and i think consistency man what a topic what a what a simple thing to do yet it is so difficult at the same time i have not been very consistent um as of late with pokemon especially well actually in particular with pokemon um it's because i have actually can i show you I have been selling on TCG Player a ton of Grand Archive singles. Grand Archive is the other game I play. I don't play, I collect, and I sell. You know, singles, blah, 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 blah. Anime for Western audience. I ripped, oh my gosh, 120. I opened up 24 cases, which is equivalent to 120, 144 boxes. Holy crap. And I have more on the way. Um, it's pretty good to rip. EV wise, um, the big challenge with the game right now, it's not straight, I don't like that. The big challenge with the game right now is this is kind of a supply shock where there's not enough singles for the players. And so the players are desperately trying to get the playables. Um, and you know what, I'll, I'll probably just try to, to grade these. I don't know. You can see they're not, when they come out of the XY boxes, they are super crispy and no issues. Um, this is like, I can't even, like, you can tell, it looks fine, but I don't know if grading-wise it's going to be worth it. Um, and there's a very high likelihood these packs contain absolutely nothing but commons and uncommons. Um, and so it's not going to be worth it to, uh, to rip point three. wait, hold on, I'm an idiot. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm not, I'm not experienced in this. Okay. Okay. 10.1. Should probably move the scissors. 10.1. Okay. I'm going to assume they're both light. 8.6. Or they could be both heavy. You know what I should have done before I started recording this video? 8.8. .8. Wait. 8.7. Okay. 8.8. .8. Okay. Is I should have checked... In a, in a VOD from my friend Rob, what the weights are that are heavy for that, but I'll do that after. 8.7, okay, these are all lights. And 8.7, great video. So I'm not gonna open any of these. Um, although, man, could these both be heavies? You know what, I'm gonna open this one up for science, mainly because I feel like this pack is, wait, I don't think they both pass. I'm going to open up that one. This is for science. So maybe they're both heavies. And if they are, then I did well. You know, this Requaza art looks a lot like Flygon from a distance. I don't know why. Um, consistency. It's been tough. I've been focusing a lot more on Grand Archive. I've done, I would say, 120 orders at this point in the last four or five days which for me is a lot because uh, i don't do this full time this is just fun um tcg player sales they're picking up you know there's a lot of cards that are playable that don't have any stock um and so players are like dying for those singles and it seems to be fairly doing fairly well so um yeah i've been focusing a lot more on that Ooh, not too Ooh, don't know, if, don't remember the name. Not the villain. Okay. 
Ooh, wait. I kind of want to open all of these. Altaria. And Spirit Link. Okay, well that wasn't really worth it. I could probably... I could probably sell these for anywhere between two and five dollars at my next show. Maybe. Only because it's Japanese, that's why people don't see it very often. Um, that sort of thing. So yeah, Grand Archive going well. Um, I've been focusing a lot on that. I've had a lot of bulk opened up. I have filled out three, four large flat rates now at this point. Um, game's going well. It's doing well for the business. It's doing well for for uh, you know my business. And honestly, I enjoy it. And I think that's the key part. And you know, consistency. And then how do you be consistent? And how do you also do this thing and enjoy it? I think that's hard because some days it's just a grind. You have to list. You have to do, um, you know, certain things. Other days, let me put this way. Other days, you just enjoy every part of the hobby. But you can't always have it that way, can you? Um, I'm going to flip camera, so give me a second. Um, and we're going to go open up the Bayou box. All right, we're back. Let's rip. Let's open this big-ass box. Um, where was I? Consistency. Let's get consistent. You know, I, when I really decided to get... Oh, whoops. That's me hitting the computer. When I decided to get back into this thing and start, you know, selling. Collecting and selling and taking this seriously. I got... I think the best piece of advice I got early, which wasn't to me directly, but... You know, just through watching videos and that kind of thing, was <sighs> hold on. Just list every day, small goals. Every day, small goals chip away. It's you know, I do, I do partake in exercise, um, and it's no similar than than forming any good habits, right? Small steps, something that's measurable every day. It's about building a pyramid. Building yourself up, having a nice base, oh my god. And eventually the body of work is going to multiply because you're gonna have a solid base and a lot of output. And when you look back months, months, years later, you'll have new habits formed and the amount of volume that you've done over that amount of time will be way more uh than you would have ever expected. So anyway, with selling, um one minute flips, Pokemon Steven back in the day. And I used to, man, that's, if there's someone that I have been watching since literally day one, that would be him. And I think his channel is doing really well now and that kind of thing. But back then, um, you know, I think the advice was just post every day, small goals, but also list everything. Just don't hold on to stuff that you don't think would sell. And I took a lot of that feedback to heart because I had a lot of crap that, you know, 15, 20, 30 bucks, um, wasn't selling or sorry, I didn't want to try to sell because I was, I couldn't get over the inertia of like, man, this is so much work, man, this is going to take a long time. And honestly, what I did was I posted or listed on eBay three, eh, I think it was five to seven listings a day for about a month. And I just did it like a robot, you know, knocked it out every single day, dedicated time to it. And, you know, I did not really see any benefit for, oh, great, good job, me, for like that month. And it wasn't until, you know, weeks later, when you get that notification, you, know, you sell something, the buyer has paid, it is the best feeling if you haven't sold stuff before. It is the best feeling as this stuff starts to come in starts to come in and then people ask questions and they want to buy other things and want to talk to you and they want to like just taking those small steps i think for me was huge and i'm talking about this as i talk to myself as i flip that over because consistency is just hard you know sometimes it's hard i am right now flipping through a lot that is like sorry i am flipping through a card lot of anywhere between heavily played to oh there you go to moderately played this actually is way more damage than i thought this lot vintage hollows um i actually think i got shafted by this auction 
I don't remember buying this. Look at that. What? There's a buyer for everything. Someone will buy this. Will it be for two bucks? Three bucks? Five bucks? I mean, in person, at my April show, there were things that I was selling. That I was selling vintage hollows that I... I would look at people and be like, I don't understand why you want this. But then again, you know, not every can everybody can afford base right shoe in a PSA 10, which I think is like 100 bucks. Uh, some people just want binder copies. And, ooh. Man, these cards were loved to hell and back. Look at this. Can you see that? Scratch the hell. Uh, okay, let me just get this out of the way. Um, yeah, listing every day, building that muscle. And before you know it, you know, I had a pretty good year last year. Um, you know, especially for someone doing this part time and I don't want to open that. And just for fun. And I think for me, taking the long view, just remembering to take the long view, sometimes it's hard. Because the long view is weeks from now, months from now. The body work speaks for itself if you put in the effort, but you gotta take the small steps first and you know eventually you'll get there. So life update. Let me just ramble a bit. Um, you know, we have a baby and I think what happened over the last two months was I'm not sure how many people have kids out there, but yeah, you know, I'll tell you from my experience. The first four to six, uh, four to five months is like, how do I say this? Uh, not very interesting. <laughs> I don't want to get canceled or anything. It is not very interesting uh, being a parent of that age. I will say that. At first, you think everything is fine and dandy. It's like, oh, wow, the baby's amazing. And, you know, we love her. And we do love her, obviously. But then you have to get into this routine you try to get into a routine and then like the baby doesn't really interact with you and I love my daughter to death. Babe, the little baby, if you ever watch this video years from now, I'm sorry I ever said this. Um, it definitely was not as interesting as opposed to, sorry, more so it wasn't as interesting than, than how it was the last two months. The last two months have been so much what do I say? So much freaking fun. Um, just every day, it's like, can't wait to wake her up. Can't wait to see what she wants to eat. Can't wait to see what she wants to play with. You know, she starts like mouthing four different words or trying to say different words that are not mama and papa. It's just so much fun. And it's like, it's, I never thought that, you know, there would be, many things in my life that would take me away from my interests but you know obviously being a good partner to my wife and then having my amazing daughter um i don't know it's just it's just this this like very tranquil experience i don't know it's like equilibrium it's like life is great there's just so much to be happy about i think having a kid really brings it out um at least in me so I'm just talking about nonsense. What am I opening up? I think in my last video, I've been telling people, or I've been showing rather, that I'm a bulk buyer, Japanese bulk buyer. I have established several relationships now where some of the stuff I buy, I have an immediate outlet. So these GXs, oh man, they look so good. GX is. I hate. I think this card is hideous. The Persian. Look at GXs. 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 Now, if you didn't know, in Japanese, Japanese booster boxes in Sun and Moon, you're guaranteed to get three, two or three, of the GXs of the RR rarities in most of the standard boxes, and so uh, as a result, there's way more um when you try to buy gx's you'll often find like many of them 
together that are the same ones. Like, this comes from Dream League. I don't know what this comes from. Anyway, I don't want to go through all of it. This comes from Shiny Legends. No, wait. I don't know. So, this this seller actually has a good variety of stuff, which... Uh, good news for that stuff is it's already sold. So, yeah, I've been buying bulk. And let's see. I've been thinking about why. And, you know, I've, I've kind of talked about in the past, what is my approach for this hobby? Why am I doing this? I'm just genuinely interested and curious. And I think the, the curiosity for me, you know, I have really, a really hard time focusing. I really, you know, really bad ADD. Not an excuse, just, just stating how my brain works. It is hard for me to stay plugged into something for, for a long time. Um, cards though, Pokemon cards, Japanese stuff. It, for some reason, like every day I can, that I get free time to browse by or go on eBay or like go watch certain videos from certain creators. I just get so excited because I don't know much. And I think that's the key thing is I get curious because I don't think I know very much. I know I'm very much, sorry. I get curious because I know there's so much to learn. And if I felt that I knew it all, then I think this hobby would not be as interesting. What is in here? And so, this is a long-winded way of talking about why I'm buying bulk. I, over the last six months, have been fairly... Hmm, how would I say this? Not very responsible. Um, you know, I have purchased... A lot of 151. This price is going down, which is great. I've been very irresponsible. Not sorry, not, not very responsible with my card finances, with what I'm buying. And it's primarily because, um, let's see, this stupid game, Grand Archive, that I've shown before. When I competed. At the last event, the collector's event they had, I got six plates, I sold the trophy, blah, blah, blah. Um, I had to spend a lot of money to catch up to get my submission to be optimal. So I spent two or three months before the event basically spending a lot of my profits, you know, probably 50% of my profits on getting the different cards that you would need for the optimal submission for that game. And so it, it slowed down my, my, you know, Pokemon business, although this is all one business. Um, and all those cards, like, if you're not familiar with Grand Archive, um, I hear the, the actual game is pretty good. I wouldn't know because I don't play it. There are top hits in every set. And uh, at the very bottom end, the top hits, they're called CSRs, Character Secret Pairs. Um... I, <laughs> what did I buy and why is it taped like this? They, they range anywhere from like a couple hundred bucks to a thousand plus bucks. And then there are the signature cards where they have the serials. Sorry, there are signature cards with serial numbers on them. And they go for anywhere between a thousand bucks to three thousand bucks. And this is not like me exaggerating. These are the actual prices with verifiable data points, um, Mind you, these are data points on Facebook and Discord because the game's not very big. This is what these cards go for. Uh, so at any moment, you know, I always worry that, like, will this actually hold up? I have no idea. But the player base and community is big enough. People are actually buying these cards. And so I feel very comfortable buying the recent sets, opening them, ripping them. Ooh, this is a nice little SR set. I hate this card. Um, so I had to, uh, anyway, the liquidity on them, the speed to liquidate, how fast to liquidate, I don't know what term this, the velocity of liquidation, let's just make that up, I made that up, is actually really fast, but the amount of volume is really, really low. So for example, those signature cards with the serialized ones that I have, I could post one, you know, probably the top card for 3,500 bucks, I would I'm 95% sure I would get a buyer within 
let's say 3000 bucks, probably within a week or two, I think. Eh, probably 25, uh, no, 2,800 to 3,000, I could get a buyer. Um, the other cards, you know, from four to 500, people are buying these cards every single day on the Discord. I see all the, the posts. I'm a, I'm a moderator or an admin in one of the, the community Discords. Um, shout out to Merlin's Marketplace. Um, the community is very tight. And for some reason, these guys have, these guys and gals have bags and they like their character rares. They like buying expensive cards, even though the sales volume is very low. So, um, Grand Archive. I committed myself to buying a bunch of the cards because I was behind from the last set, mainly because of life, and I just got burnt out. Um, and so I had to catch up. And through catching up, you know, these submissions for the for the event, they're like 50... 60 i think 50 to 60 cards that are the secret rares the character secret rares okay and in total value i would say if you bought all of them today if you found if you're lucky enough to find someone who would sell you every single one you would definitely be getting somewhere between 25 to thirty thousand for all of them no exaggeration that is how much they cost as a whole so you can kind of back through the math. I was behind a little bit and I had to catch up. So I had to spend a good amount of money and focusing too. you know, again, the, the amount of volume is low. So I had to spend a lot of my free time in the discords, um, contacting people, you know, just eyeing the sales posts every single day because this stuff, some of this stuff goes really fast and it's hard to find. Um, so anyway, Man, this is a... I want a tangent today. I diverted a lot of my time and attention and money into Grand Archive. Financially, it actually paid off. Pays off, I should say. But I think, you know, on the topic of consistency and, like, focus, it's really... I, I realize, like, it's really hard for me to, to, to focus on, like, this, you know, that game and then Japanese Pokemon and reselling, like... This bulk, I should have had this done. I shouldn't say should have. Never say should have. I could have had this done two or three weeks ago. But every time I get free time, like when the baby's down or work breaks, I was spending it on Grand Archive instead. And so I'm behind. Um, but, you know, why aren't there rares? No. Did I get wrecked on this lot? And they sent a bunch of ho reverse hollows? Time is not infinite, and you have to pick and choose. Oh, just one. I'm very curious. Why did they sleeve everything in some of these lots? And they don't even use good penny sleeves. Um, time is not infinite. It's hard. It's hard to focus on m multiple things. It's hard to remember to list. It's hard to remember to to buy and source. I was. I mean, I'm, I've been behind on sourcing too. That's why these big boxes come. Um, but I think the, the key thing for me, if it's enjoyable enough, I'll figure out a way. And I, I, I've, you know, taking a step back, looking at what I've accomplished in the last year, which by the way, you should be proud of what you do, you've done in the last year. Everyone who's watching, I'm sure you've done a lot. Just getting that perspective and really looking at the body of work for me, someone who is, you know, busy with work, now have a kid, trying to be a good partner to my wife, uh, trying to run a Pokemon cards business, trying to collect, trying to run a grand archive business. Sorry, I should stop doing that. Um, I've come a long way, and I'm proud of it. I've accumulated a lot of stuff. Like, what is going on here? Um, <laughs> that's By the way, that's like a fifth of it, because there's another room, and then there's a, um, a storage unit full of stuff. Not even a fifth, I should say. There's probably like an eighth. Um, be proud of what you've done and the time you've put in. And it's okay to, to reward yourself. Like, you know, I, I like to do impulsively uh, within reason. So I don't expect to go through all this because I'm pretty sure... I'm just going to peek so I know what's what. I'll put it to the side. I'll do all this another time. I currently am selling VMAX lots and V lots on eBay. Um, 
I don't know what the price is when you see this, but you can go see on my eBay what that looks like. Um, and again, I make a pretty good chunk of change. I've had committed buyers. I have people now actually lining up and saying, hey, when you get your next 500,000, 2,000 V, V maxes, whatever, hit me up. And uh, it's a great feeling when you know that you have a guaranteed way out. I think this is... 100 ARs. I believe this is a questionable buy because the market for these are not... Yeah, I do love these though. I would say, in my opinion, from what I see, I think the market for these, because they are guaranteed in Japanese boxes, it's not very strong. And so if you buy them, you got to be careful. Um, I might be sitting on this for a while unless I fire sell them for like... A buck? A buck each? Just list this whole thing for a hundred bucks? I don't know. But I want some variety. Um, I don't understand what is going on here. Okay. Grand Archive. Consistency. Being proud of myself. Being proud of yourself. Going all the way back. Why am I buying bulk? <laughs> See, this is what happens when this thing starts rolling and... I don't have a script. I will go. I will tell stories to the moon and back. Okay, cool. I have found that one of the challenges for me as this part-timer, buyer, seller, collector guy is what is what is the thing I can go to and gravitate to that is consistent that I can rely on. And don't get me wrong. I spent a lot of time buying Japanese stuff. Um, I love looking at Japanese sites. I love buying from different Instagram sellers. I love just really being head, for, head first into it. But unless I decided to go into Sealed, which is kind of just a consistent product, you can buy at a certain price, you can get a lot of it, hopefully you can make margin on it. There's actually not a lot that you can rely on in this hobby on the Japanese front to make money. Um, and... I think I've gotten to the point now where I want to have some level of stable or expected income from a certain, you know, playbook. And that's why I leaned into bulk. Because as soon as I figured out who I could who I could source for, man, these cards suck. What is wrong with me? I need to rethink my lot buying. Although I do have some ridiculous lots coming in. Um... These are not pretty. Bulk for me is that thing. It's kind of rewarding, I should say, in a weird way. It's, you know, I'm talking about thousands of cards, which is manageable for me. I can spruce up a, a pack of 100. I can put some popular Pokemon in them. I check with all the buyers, like, do you enjoy this? Did you enjoy the lot I sent? What did you think? And just having that ability to be flexible in selling this stuff, um, I don't know, it really, it feels good. Um, and the hardest part for anyone out there, I've shared what I do with a lot of different people, it's not actually buying it. It's figuring out who will buy it from you, as with many things. But bulk, like, look, English bulk is rough because there are a lot of people what is this? There are a lot of people who do it and do it well. That's hold on. Um, so there are a lot of options. Japanese bulk. I'm not spreading, I'm not sharing a trade secret here. But I'm just stating facts. There are not a lot of people who are willing to buy it, and I think it takes a special kind of someone who is who has a customer base who wants to sell them to a dollar or however much. I'm assuming they're selling them for between one and three bucks. Um, that's, those people are not exactly easy to find. What? So did I buy this from the same seller or something? I got a couple of these and a 10, pretty cheap. Decent flip, nice to fill out the case um, for my next show. 
yeah, there's there's not an endless amount of buyers for this stuff. That's that's the thing. But I got lucky, and I feel confident enough, and it's easy enough work for me that I uh, yeah, I feel good about. Uh, and I've established some relationships with these people. You know, they buy once on eBay, and they hit you up, and they don't want to use eBay anymore. Uh, let's open up this one. This, I effed up on this one pretty bad because I thought this was Japanese. Um, this is what happens when in the morning at 4 a.m. I do wake up at 4, sometimes 4.30, sometimes 5. I have my green drink, I sit on the couch, have my coffee, and then I jump on by for like an hour. This is what happens when you're wired and hyper excited. And you buy random stuff on the internet without double checking exactly what it is. Um, this is the Chinese Celebrations 25th Anniversary, whatever they call it, promotional kit. I thought it was a Japanese one because I got thrown off by these characters. I thought this is Japanese. Obviously, I can't read Japanese or Chinese, but uh, this is Chinese, so... I don't know what to do with it. I'm probably just going to resell it on eBay. And actually, this has been opened? Yeah, I don't think so. I'll just sell it as new on eBay. Oh, crap. There we go. See if someone buys it. It's pretty cool. I have this promo um, in a 10 already. You can't tell, but there's a nice, nice little glossy nature to it. Okay, let's continue. Man, this is a big box. The bulk play will be here for the foreseeable future. I'm going to rely on it. I have a lot of it coming. It's pretty easy to scale for me as a one-man shop who's doing this part-time. And, uh, you know, I think my challenge... Sorry, another challenge, I should say. Doing this thing is... Sometimes I slack. I slack and I'm not productive with my time. I caught myself on Bai and Mercari, for example, the other day. This is like four or five days ago. Two hours. I think it was last Saturday, actually. Like a week and then eight days ago. Two hours in the morning. I didn't buy a single thing. I added a bunch of stuff to my cart. I got really excited. And then by the end of it, you know, I got really busy because of the baby and stuff like that. Didn't buy a single thing. And if you really want to distill down, like, hey, is this worth it? And, like, tactics and, you know, how do you do not tell. Oh, my God. This is why you don't buy bulk. You sleeved every single one. And now I have to unsleeve them. And they're nice sleeves, too. No. Two hours. Not a single purchase. So if you really want to break this down into like dollars per hour and, you know, can you do this for a full, as a full time, I will probably never, ever consider doing what I'm doing today full time. I just simply would not make enough. And that's not me saying I make a ton of money or anything. I've done quite well for myself professionally. Um, I don't think cards would ever be able to keep up with, you know, my professional career growth. Just stating facts about you know my background i think though if i change the business a bit you know can i deal in high super high end and liquid product you know minimum sale of five hundred dollars a sale or three hundred dollars a sale with you know four to five sales a day i think then that would be that would be doable but uh, that's hard. That's really hard to do. And if I'm going to scale this thing, I don't want to spend more time. I want to work less. So, you know, for now, I kind of just keep it as a hobby. It's going to be that way for a while. More GXs. Ooh. It's been a while since I've seen that. And him. Just keep it this way for a bit. Oh, yeah, the... If you're really thinking about doing this full time, the best way to slap yourself in the face and get a dose of reality 
think about dollars per hour. How much would you make working at a Starbucks or McDonald's? I think McDonald's in California pays 20 something an hour, which is crazy because when I was when I was a kid, minimum wage was like 5 bucks. I don't know. Obviously cost of living in California is way higher, and so it's not a great comparison, but I think they pay like 20 something an hour. Uh, that's a lot. I do not think I make more than 20 bucks an hour with cards. At least consistently. On average, probably not. Maybe certain times of the year, certain sets. You know, for a week or two, I probably make a ton of money. A ton more per hour. But in most cases, what? I don't want to... Oh my gosh, this is the most aggravating... What is going on? Why do you do this? Oh my gosh. Every single one is like, I guess they were thinking, oh, I'm going to protect this for the buyer. Every single one is fronted with, okay, that is a project. Hence why I have no free time. Um, uh, this would be a nice project to do while I'm watching TV. Let's say you want to make 25 bucks an hour. 25 bucks an hour gross. Let's say minus fees. Let's pretend this is like you're working a real job. 25 bucks an hour minus fees. So gross 25 bucks an hour. 30%. You need to sell at a rate of like 33 to 35. Wait, that's 30%. $30, $30 an hour to make it equivalent to like a $25 an hour job. And that's you being able to work eight hours a day and sell consistently for eight hours a day. Uh, that's tough. I, I don't know. See why you got to be consistent. So you know exactly what's coming in and when, and then you remember exactly why you bought it. I think this is a lot of CHRs and ARs from 151. Look at this thing. They have locked this thing down like Fort Knox. I think they smashed some of this too. Oh, the joys. Oh my gosh, look at this Pringle chip. Pringle chip, Pringle chip, Pringle chip. I think I just got wrecked on this listing. Uh, well, gonna have to figure out a solution for that. Let's see how this one is. See if I were consistent, then it wouldn't be a problem. I would be okay. We know exactly what's coming in when, what to unpack, when to sort, but I'm not. I am getting a head start, though, on this next show that's coming in July. So uh, as I mentioned before, I got some pretty big lots coming in um, for the binders to fill out, and I'm super pumped to open them up and share. I don't understand why these are all bent. Like, what was this person doing? Nice Bulbasaur, though. Oh. This is going to be a long video, ain't it? The so next event, early July, in Burlingame, Burlingame, California. And it's ran by the East Bay Card Show, even though Burlingame is in the West the west side of the bay. The bay's a big place. Feels like there's a card show every week, every two weeks. But, holy crap. Not a lot of, uh, the feedback I hear is like, some of the shows are not very good. Ripping. Mickey Mouse. 
So when I get that those collections in, oh, I will uh, start working on the binder. And you know the mid era stuff for me last show did incredibly well. Uh, but I got some some competition coming with me. A couple of buddies of mine who also sell in Japanese. Rob from Red or Blue. I'm sure many of you guys know him. He'll be vending with me. And then my buddy Adrian, uh, who's flying in from the East Coast. He'll be vending with me. What am I doing? Guys, what am I doing? I am genuinely curious, when they had these lots for sale, how did they acquire them? Collections? Because sometimes like this, there's some stuff that's sleeved, a lot of the stuff that isn't sleeved, a lot of the stuff like comes in different types of sleeves. It's so bizarre to me. Um, but I guess they just source... Ooh, rainbow. I think rainbows are so underrated. Ooh, gouging fire. Some of the most underrated cards in the set. In the, in the hobby. Probably because they pin, pin, print too many variations of cards these days. It's hard to appreciate some of the designs. So, what are they just looking at? Those are SRs, secret rares. More SRs. Nice. I'm also doing an SR lot, which should be great. I think that'll do fairly well too. I'm gonna guess this is more SRs. I've been holding on to this box it's been sitting in the corner for about a week and a half, two weeks. Um, I was just so excited to make this video when I got the time. But I, as most things in life, another one of these guys, didn't have the time. Kept pushing it back and pushing it back. And now, you know, today's a light day just with work and you know, grandparents are here. I figured, you know what? I gotta take care of this. Why wouldn't I record? Why wouldn't I? Uh, let's see. Price wise, pretty cheap on all this stuff. I won't spoil it. Ooh, that's a CSR. Oh, that's a SAR. Wait, what else is in this? I won't spoil what I paid, because you can go and look and buy it yourself. Ooh, this is not bad. Not bad at all. You can go and buy Mercari and go look at what SRs go for. You're looking at like a dollar and a half to three bucks each. Three bucks would be a lot. You can do the math. Look on eBay. How much are these things selling for in lots? And you can decide from there. Thank you. Oh, I love it when they include these notes. How kind. One time I got a package and uh, <laughs> this guy sent like a two, it must have been like a two inch by three inch picture of himself with a handwritten letter on the back saying thank you. Uh, it was very odd. Very, very odd. I think we're Coming to an end. Ugh. Another GX lot. Let me just take a couple moments and say how appreciative I am of you watching and engaging and how thankful I am for us. Like, it's, thank you to enjoy this hobby and share this hobby and find, I don't want to say like minded folks because. It's not about finding like-minded folks. I mean, we're, we're all like-minded if we all like the same thing, I guess. I don't think I would continue to do this if the, there wasn't a community or communities or people, you know, to share this stuff with. That's real talk. I think 
in my previous hobbies, say video games, eventually friends, you get distant from friends, you can't play games with them anymore. And then a lot of the, the games that you're kind of have, you have access to are just, that's you playing single player games. And uh, I have no idea what the hell this is. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming this is some type of bulk. In cards, I feel like there's just endless support, endless sharing, endless feedback, endless... There's always someone to share what you're doing with the hobby. And I think that's what I appreciate the most. Is This video is probably going to get 100 views, 200 views, 500 views. I don't know. But it makes me feel good about my time investment. About, you know making content and recording when I know there's someone out there that actually enjoys bulk VMAXs and Vs. You know what? I gotta say, of all the people that have sent that I've just bought from, this person I am in love with. I gotta figure out which seller sent this because this just made my life way easier. Oh, thank you, thank you. All right, last box for this package, that is. Hobby's fun. I enjoy it. And I don't think I'm going to stop enjoying it anytime soon. So, you know, for me, that's important. Having people to share this interest with. It's another seller I'm going to love. Please. And the grand finale. I have a box cutter somewhere I should probably use, but I'm just going to use my scissors like a baboon. <gasps> the holy grail. Look at all that. Oh my gosh. One of these lots. Half mixed. These are the ones coming. They're like half mixed, half sleeve, upside down. Oh well, we'll deal with it. All right. Ooh, long video. Um, thank you. Thanks for watching. Let me know how you're doing. Um, uh, love to hear from you. Um, I got a show in about a month, so I'll be recording a bit more. Thanks for watching as always. Appreciate you, and have a good day.